from Times Square in the heart of New York City. Welcome to All Night with Joey Reynolds. Joey's guest tonight, boxing writer and sports historian Bert Sugar. Comedian Rick Younger. Recording artist and TV personality Oleg Frisch. New media editor Jeffrey Balmash. Director Alex Trayman. Our musical guests, Dad Wilson and Jessica Phillips. And just a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, Joey Reynolds. Oh, uh, really good. You didn't blow one name tonight. It's nice. <laughs> Carl's an announcer who gets the names wrong. And I can't, I, I don't know why I'm the announcer, I thought. Uh, anyway, welcome to the show. We're glad to be here. I'm glad to be in Times Square. And uh, when, you, when you come here and you see our, our market site for NASDAQ at 43rd and Broadway, you'll notice that there's a lot of signs around Bill Maher's big billboard across the street, uh, the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, even Mario Lopez was here today, uh, brown nosing with uh, some of the people from that uh, ridiculous uh, gossip show. What's that thing called? Extra? Is it extra? Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, these, these things that where they stand with a crowd of people behind them, I think I talked a little bit about it last night. They have a crowd of people behind them and then they, they tell all the gossip and the people behind them just gawk. They don't say anything, they have no speaking parts, they don't give their names, nobody knows who they are, there's no names under their bellies, you know, like there are for most news shows. So the people are just standing there and I'm wondering, what is the bit? This, this looks like the crowd that's ready to crucify somebody, you know? I mean, they're, all, they're, they're behind him and they do nothing. But I guess this is the new, the new form of television. You show that you have somebody who is interested in what you're saying because you sure can't get them at home. So you may as well have them stand behind you and they know they're gonna be on TV so they're gonna be captive for a while. So I brought my own guy to stand next to me because you know the people over at NBC want a younger image. <laughs> and they wanna have somebody who's got, uh, uh, you know, I mean I'm a little bit of a, I don't like to use the word older guy, but let's face it, you know, I mean, I'm not exactly uh, 22 starting out, and, and I'm, I'm not going to be uh, Ryan Seacrest's uh, understudy. So I'm, I'm a guy who's a seasoned performer. And I have, in my, uh, in my older years, you know, of, of doing just about everything in show business, I have to hand it over to somebody. And, and, and somewhere along the line, you know, somebody's going to want this show after I get it off the ground, which I'm trying to get off the ground. This is like the spruce goose. I think I've had my 15 minutes and it ain't gonna fly again. But besides the point, I have, uh, I have with me uh, somebody who's young and I, I figure if you're not even listening to the show but you're watching it now or even not paying attention, which most people don't do because we have attention deficit disorder, I, I think that uh, you, you will watch the screen and you'll see me with a younger guy and you'll think this is the show you're supposed to watch because there's someone young on it. <laughs> it's, it's all cosmetic, it has nothing to do with any talent anymore, essentially. I mean, even that Simon Cowell, they're spending millions of dollars to give away millions of dollars. <laughs> Which, I don't know, I think it's a little redundant. <laughs> but I'm complaining, I don't want to complain about anything. You, you heard that all day on radio and television, everybody complains about everything. I mostly want to bring joy into your life. And, uh, and, and I, I want to, people who are not paying particular attention, looking at the screen, wondering what the hell this guy is doing standing next to me. <laughs> I'm wondering how long you're gonna watch this screen before you turn the sound up and say, who is that and what are they doing? You know, <laughs> because it's a visual medium. You know, I mean, you're, you're a lot different than the radio. Well, Joe could be here all night with me and nobody cares. But on the television, you got a guy standing here and he looks like he's like, like I could only get one guy to watch me instead of that whole crowd that Mario Lopez had. <laughs> I got one guy that pays attention to me that's really not paying attention to me. He's just here to be on TV. Now, frankly, this guy was on television as a star long before me. Now, as young as he is, he was on MTV Real World. And uh, I guess he was the first superstar from that house down in Miami, if you remember back in those days. And the thing about Joe is he's never aged. Joe looked like this coming out of the womb. And, uh, and, and you, 
you're still the same age. I mean, this is how many years ago did you do Real World? 16 years ago. <laughs> and you look the same. Well, thank you, Joey. What are you doing? I mean, you got some uh, Dick Clark truth serum or what? It's, you know? it's mom and dad. It's all. He looked genes. great until the last couple of years. You know, he, what I mean, he, he looked good. He still looks good. Yeah. And you look great. You thank look great. You. you look the same as you did 16 years ago when I met you as well. Well, I can thank a lot of people for this. Oh. <laughs> Cosmetic surgery and you know, Joan the Rivers. makeup room. Yeah, the there. makeup room back. <laughs> <laughs> now this is pretty. This is pretty cool, though, right? To be oh my gosh, it's totally doing. cool. Look at all this stuff, and it's all for you. No, 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 no. Oh, it's no. all for it's you. All for them. Yeah. Yes. For, don't don't do that. My God, I'll be persecuted <laughs> by the network. All right. So you know what happened is Joe Joe had a television career on MTV Real World where the cameras followed him everywhere. Yeah. They were right up his nose. And what do you do? You sign a contract where they're with you. 24-7, yeah. whether you're in the bathroom, whether you're on the beach, whether you're in the club. Or with whether, girls. Or with girls. You and know, you had a relationship with a girl at the time. I was actually uh, heavily dating and on the way to engagement and got engaged on the show. Uh, so they followed me and her a whole lot. Uh, she was actually on eight episodes of the 22 that they actually put out in the end, which is kind of unheard of. Uh, but they liked uh, our relationship and that was a big part of their story. So. Uh, it was pretty out of control, but I mean, they followed us uh, in church. They followed us in the, uh, liter literally in the bathroom, in the bedroom, in the living room. You know, it was ridiculous. Can, can I tell the other part of the story? Yes, sure. All right. Joe's father was a pilot for Pan Am, or engineer. Flight engineer. Flight engineer. Yeah. Wonderful guy. Great. Nine kids. No, eight, and one lost. What, what yes, eight, eight, eight kids, kids in the end. Yeah. So Joe, Joe decided to come home for Thanksgiving when the cameras were following him and they would never stop following you, so you sneaked out of the house, right? That is correct. And in, in the one morning you slipped out of Miami and yep. came up here, Yep. and when you got off the plane, they were there. They were there. They, and and, and your I did father, it four times, and they did that four times. Well, on Thanksgiving, though, you oh, went yeah. home. Yep, for, yep. He went home for, for Thanksgiving, and his father told the guys that they must sit in the hall, and he sent turkey out there. Is <laughs> yeah. that right? It was a combination effort. Mom, Dad, and my <laughs> sister, Christina, they started feeling bad for them sitting out in, on Thanksgiving in the van, just sitting there waiting for the allowance to go in the house, because yeah. the one protection that I had was that my parents wouldn't allow the cameras in the house. Unlike everybody else out there uh, in America who would love to have a camera, uh, on them at any point yeah, in maybe, time. Well, maybe. a whole lot of people. Now, some guys want to catch their wives doing something too. You know? Oh, that's hey, all that's another true, deal. that's true, true. All right, so true. now I'm, I'm a reality type guy, would yeah. you say? I mean, I'm not... This is more real than <laughs> any other TV show there right. is. Now, uh, what I do is I go outside and I grab people, you know, Sweet. and they run into somebody sometimes and grab them, bring them in, because we can't get guests, you know. Oh, nice. We run out of guests on this show, I got to go to the Port Authority. <laughs> So uh, I'd pick someone up, you know, a guy getting off a bus in Scranton. That, that is a great pool of people. You got, you got anyone you could possibly want. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're friends. You and I are friends. Totally great, great friends. And I love you. I, you're like a son ditto, to me, ditto, though. Ditto, Joey. And you, but you know, you're like I have, a brother to me, Joey. Uh, well, you know, I mean, I, I, I just don't want you wanting to take over my show. You don't want the show, do you? I don't want the show. But then show. you can stay. <laughs> yes, right on, right on. But Rick Younger's coming out. He's a threat. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> All right, now, now what I want to do is I want to, I want to go outside. I want to show you what we did. We did actually did go outside before. Oh, shit. This is my reality shot. Ah. You know, the cameras that followed me. Cool. And, uh, and, I, and I, want to, I want to show you what I did. Right on. All right, so this is what happened when I went outside. <laughs> you never know who you're going to run into. All right, I'm in my neighborhood now. I'm in my element. So I, I just want to say hello to you. And are you Italian? No, we are from Argentina. Yeah, I know. Where yeah. do all the Italians go? Pardon, pardon? Don't Italians move to Argentina? The Italians? Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. I'm one of them. No, Is this Fresh Sugar? You're... How are you? Joey, how are, where are we? I never know who I'm going to run into when I'm out here. What are you doing? Well, I'm smoking. You're not supposed to smoke. There's no smoking in public places anymore. Oh, but carbon dioxide's good for you out of buses, but smoke is bad. You're beautiful and you should be on TV. Oh, thank you. All right, now see, uh, what's your name first? Maria. And what's yours? Alba. And yours? Anna. And where are you from, Italy? Spain. 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 Nobody from America. I couldn't find, I can't find anybody local today. It's impossible. So, Here in Times Square, it's impossible. I, I know you're right. You're right. <laughs> Especially when it's four degrees or whatever it is. So, you know, I see I have that show in there and I'm on every night. It's called All Night with Joey Reynolds. See, right in that window. I, yeah. And I decided to come outside and say hello to the public. But guess what? There's nobody from here here. I have a bong on my belt. I don't want to do this. <laughs> That's a good line. I hate you for it, but I'm stealing it. Uh, I'm from Egypt. 
Good. Well, well, you got out. Well, I'm glad you got out. So, are you a Mubarak fan? Uh, I own fan. Mubarak plays with the Giants, in case you're just <laughs> living somewhere in, on another planet. You're French. Where are you from? Montreal? Paris. Paris? Oh, you're real Frenchman. You're not those Paris. fake, those Paris. fake Canadians. <laughs> well, you know, we have everybody. Nobody's from Jersey. Everybody's from somewhere else. We never get anybody local here. Are you from here? Where are you from? No? He's, oh, he's my God. Good, Egypt. It's good. It's uh, good, huh? Beautiful New York. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, you gave us the Statue of Liberty. We're very grateful. Mahmoud. Are you also Mahmoud? Mahmoud, yeah. Me. Mahmoud. Mahmoud, Mahmoud. Mahmoud Fantaka. M-A-H-M-U-D? M-A-H-M-O-U-D. Yeah, I almost know how to spell it. <laughs> My name is Felisa. And what's yours? Oscar. I haven't met anybody from this country. I've been here 15 minutes. Nobody. Where are you from? Uh, South America, Bolivia. Madrid, Spain. I cannot meet anybody. You know, only. But we only, live in New Jersey. Oh, well, that that discounts everything. <laughs> <laughs> you are really. You're <laughs> <laughs> this happens to me every night. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. No, we live here in New York. Oh, you do. Yeah. What do you do? Here, I study English. Oh, you're studying English. Yes. How's it going? Sorry. I'm going to go across the street Good because job. I got to get a crowd there. But you come in anytime you want. We're neighbors. Bring food. <laughs> You know what burnt sugar is? Burnt sugar? Burnt no. sugar. Come on, you don't know. Do you know who Joey Reynolds is? No, sir. We're batting zero. <laughs> I'm not a Joey Reynolds. You Joey Reynolds? Yeah, I am. Yeah. I, that's me. I'm here like for 40 years. This guy, my friend, he just came from Egypt like 10, 10 days. Oh, well, yeah. welcome. It's good to have you here. So Come inside. My English is slowly. No, your English is fine. Don't worry. But I understand every word, and I know how to buy a hot dog from you. So don't worry. No problem. Really happy. This, it's so cold that the Statue of Liberty had a torch under her dress. <laughs> He's great. Watch his show. Um, You're from England. I'm from Australia. UK. UK. Yeah. Do I speak like this? Yes. No, I don't. Cockney. More Cockney. <laughs> this is the, one of those nights, you know, I'm going to have to... I, I was going to go across the street and build a crowd and look across the street here, but I don't think anybody speaks English. <laughs> So that's reality. I'm from Brooklyn, Joey. I came off the street. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see where you, nobody, nobody's from here anymore? That is amazing. When that is it's, totally amazing. When the weather's like this. It's freezing but out there. In the spring, there will be another crowd yes. out here. Plus, we're going to put sound outside. And every other television network and station will want to be here. Totally. Because yeah. we started it first. You know, that's why this is the footprint. You start many things, Joey. I know, and I'm going to finish this one. Yes. <laughs> yes. This one here, I want, to, I, want to, I want to be the last guy standing in Times Square. Awesome, awesome. Well, maybe not. No, you will be. All right, we're going to bring Burr Sugar out here. Have you met him yet? I haven't met him. Okay. So Joe Patain, Joe's World, and you can go to uh, your site is what? Joe'sWorld.org. Yeah, and, and he does some great work with uh, kids who are less fortunate and also with girls who have been abused, too, in totally. their social work. Totally, totally. Uh, so Joe, Joe has uh, got a couple of partners. I can mention one, Steve Wozniak, who invented the computer. Nothing too serious. Nothing too big. And uh, just to mention this uh, on the side, <clears throat> Steve Wozniak came here. Yes. And I took him with you to see Les Paul. Yes, it was great. And, and he called me and he said, is Les Paul in the Inventors Hall of Fame? Yep. And I said, I don't know. So I call Les and he says, I don't know what the hell I'm in. I'm in everything. You know, he was 90 something. Yep, yep. And, and Steve nominated him and got him into the Inventors Hall of Fame. I remember. So that was because of Steve Wozniak. I remember. Who was a fellow inventor. He, and, and a big fan of Les Paul's. And yeah. uh, when he passed away recently, I sent him the picture as a reminder hey, Steve, you remember this day? Yeah. It was a special day. And he took it very, very seriously and heartfelt. It was beautiful. And beautiful we, have day another, we have another friend, Drew Carey. Oh, yes. He was a wonderful. Generous man. He's fantastic. Philanthropic guy. So there's a lot of good people who do things privately. I just let one little cat out of the bag. It's but, all good. You know, but he's a, he's, a, he's a great guy. I should get credit for it. Thanks. Plus, he's from Cleveland, so you know something good's <laughs> got to come out of that town. Uh, we're gonna, I'm from Buffalo, which is the other mistake on the lake. <laughs> we're going uh, to be right back with Bird Sugar. Thank you, Joe. I love you. Oh, thank you, Joe's Joe. My, my pleasure. This is, this is my, if, if you're going to have a son, this is the one you <laughs> This is what you have. Joey. We'll be right back. Thank you.
Joey, Joey, Joey Reynolds. He's Bert Sugar, and I'm going to be walking in there any second, hour, minute, night. To Joey Reynolds from Al Joey. celebrities have something to say, they head for the stoop. This is my stoop. I gotta come to the stoop. Talk stoop. I feel like we're so close that we could kiss. This is a whole other kind of stoop. Yeah, it's where Cat like Greenleaf that. gets people talking. What? What? Really? Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Listen, Naked, do you mind if I call you Naked? Damn, Damn something good. good. The best of New York Hello, on a stoop baby. in Brooklyn. The celebrity butts that have graced the stoop. Talk stoop. Weeknights at 8 on New York Nonstop. Sponsored by Cozy. Live should be delicious. I'm an anchor and a pilot. I am passionate about chocolate. I am a ballerina. I'm the daughter of a jazz musician. I am a four-time New York Golden Glove champion. I'm my grandpa. Yeah, I'm a grandma. I'm interested in the story behind the story. I'm making this look natural. I am glamorous. I am an anchor and a blues girl. I am all about my craft. I am New York. I am New York. I'm a New Yorker. I am New York. I am New York. New Yorkers, LX New York. It's the story of the moment, a taste of the best. It's opening night, a helping hand, the characters of New York, the spirit of New York, told our way. LX New York, weekdays at five. We're all over town. Same cry with people in bed saying the same thing that I'm saying for different reasons. Give me a little sugar. So here's Bert Sugar. <laughs> Bring him on out. Bert, take the Pert walk. <laughs> oh, he's got that cigar. Boy, that guy's never going to give up. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. The cigar magazine cover. Well, you're not on it for a change. How are you, Bert? Really? Good. Wonderful. Nice to be here. Where are we? Oh, we're on uh, Broadway. Yeah. And you Big made time. It. You made it. Sit on your book. It'll make you taller. There I am. I need all the help I can get. Boxing list, the ultimate book of boxing list. Is it a dead sport? No. By, no? By far. It's the second most popular in the world. Unfortunately, America, it would be charitably number 11 on the top 10. Yeah. But you have to understand, we have more sports. Did you know Texas Hold'em is a sport? No. It's on ESPN all the time. Yeah. You think it's a sport. Well, that's true. Uh, but around the world, boxing is doing well. We're not doing well for a reason. We have, we like big things in America. We like big cars, big houses, big bank accounts, big chested women, and big fighters. <laughs> it's been that way since John L. Sullivan and way back. Now, what happened was, Lennox Lewis showed us that two, uh, 250 pounds you could fight. When you consider Marciano was 189, Joe Lewis 204 at his heaviest, Ali 224. Yeah. And then you get 250. Well, a kid in America who is 250 and talented and athletic and smart. Usually spent too much time at McDonald's. No, he's going into football even if he has. Yeah. Well, what about Klutchko? Klutchko is how much. Yeah, but they ain't American. No, See, that's they true. don't have an alternative. They don't play football in the Ukraine. Here, the best two American heavyweights are named Ray Lewis and Brian Urlacher, and they're in the NFL. Yeah. So we ain't got them. So that impacts upon American following. Well, you know, I like the lightweight uh, fighters anyway I, because they dance better. 
Uh, well, the, you know, or like Polly Molinage, I like him very much. Well, Willie Pep was the greatest dancer of yes, all time. Yes, exactly. That's and one of the lists in the ultimate list of, of a book of boxing list. Greatest footwork, and Willie Pep. Yeah. And then you had Pernell Whitaker. Yeah. Pernell Whitaker looked like a sand dancer. <laughs> you know, the way he moved. So you had great movement. Most of the heavyweights look like they're wiping the back of their feet off after stepping on the dog dew on the front mat. Well, I was just thinking that Sammy Davis even did Golden Boy on Broadway. Yeah. Wasn't that about a fighter? Yes. And he was, uh, you know, I mean, Clifford Odets. It was done originally in the movies by Bill Holden. Yeah. In '39. But what you have is Ali. That's why he was such a revelation yeah. because of his ability to move. Nobody had ever seen a heavyweight move. Yeah, they're usually lugs. You're right. Yeah, You're I, right. I, they got that. Too. Well, even the Klitschko's are that way. They, they yeah. don't, they're not graceful. Well, I, I went to a Klitschko fight at the Garden against Sultan Abramovog. I think that's how you pronounce it. I have no idea. And it was the most boring fight I have ever seen. The, the uh, writer in the row in front of me at the Garden told me to quit snoring. I was keeping him awake. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> well, I want to I jog a little bit back because uh, one of the things I like to do on the air with this and one of the reasons I wanted to do the show, besides have a job, is is that I like I like to present the history with the future. And you know, the young, like I just had Joe with me. He's a young guy. You know, you want to have a young guy, and then you want to have somebody who's seasoned, like myself. And and you know, you were the history of boxing. Well, I'm sort of well seasoned as well. Well, you, you are a, a, absolutely from the beginning to so far. And you know, <laughs> and and I want to I want to present that because. I think uh, the combination of the past and the, and, and the future gives us the present. That's how I look at it. Well, it is, and everything is relative, except maybe Eve telling Adam about all the men she could have married. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. You must compare what happened to today. Well, let me, let me bring something up Go here ahead. for a second. The uh, uh, boxing, we used to have the Gillette, when television first came on, black and white, Fridays, mm. Where was a fight night? Was Gillette? I think it was Friday. Pass Blue Ribbon was Wednesday, I think, when they, they expanded the franchise. Am I correct about that? Yes. But I'm it was a sponsor thing. It had it, it was really and it but it wasn't staged for television. It was covered. Now they stage the fights for television. You know, you know I mean, it's... Well, they even stage the weigh-ins for television. Yeah, it's all, it's all playing to the camera, to the medium, rather than... Well, boxing, and I, and I was brought up in Washington, D.C., in Richmond, Virginia. We got boxing on the coaxial cable that went from Schenectady to Richmond every night of the week except on Sunday, a la yeah. Melina McCurry, never on Sunday. But we could get it from St. Nicholas here in New York, Madison Square Garden, obviously, Sunnyside Garden. I mean, and there was a fight a night. Yeah. Because boxing, when it first started, or television first started, not boxing, it was the easiest thing to cover. All you needed was two cameras. Yeah. And the script was written. It was a reality show in front of you in black and white. Of course, the problem was the set was this big, <laughs> and the cabinet was this big. Remember those? <laughs> yeah. Now, when did you start uh, getting interested in boxing? Was that your first interest? or? Well, baseball and boxing. Baseball? Uh, but my granddaddy took me to a fight in 1941 at Griffith Stadium in Washington. Now, I was five years old. And all I remember is somebody fell out of the ring and, the, and they had lights and I kept looking at the lights. I later found out it was Joe Lewis and Buddy Bear, Boy. Max's brother, who uh, fell out, knocked Lewis out, out of the ring and Lewis climbed right back in and knocked him, knocked the hmm out of him. But, you know, I always loved boxing. And I boxed in college, not well, oh, thank yeah. you. My nickname was the Great White Hopeless, that's how bad I was. <laughs> But I've always liked boxing, and uh, it became a chance for me. I'd been a lawyer for about a month. I, you know, it's the only bar I ever passed. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, came to New York to be in advertising, and then went into writing. It's so you made, you made your uh, marketing work for you? Yeah. Marketing, yeah. advertising, and also writing. And your interest in sports. I mean, really, you're, well, you're interested in all kinds of sports, I think. Well, baseball, college, football, yeah. pro football. Did you like basketball. the Super Bowl this year? Yes, except for the rendering of the Star Spangled Banner and the. Well, that uh, didn't bother you. I mean, you just. No, uh, I heard Robert Goulet do worse to it at the yeah, Sunday list. Yeah, come on. <laughs> well, how about Roseanne fight. Barr scratching herself during and, the, wor the World yeah, Series? Yes. You know? uh, or uh, you know, there've been several bad renditions. It was a good game. It was not a great game, but yeah. it was a good game. And between two storied franchises. 
Green Bay, yeah. and, and Pittsburgh. Did you see Lombardi yet on Broadway? Have you seen I the have show? tickets. I have not seen it. It's very good, you know. Dan Luria plays yes. Lombardi. He does a great job. It's, it's I mean, a wonderful it, it, show. You know, and and uh, I had a chance to meet Vince Lombardi. He was a very nice man off the field. I yeah. hear from the people on the field that he was tough. Well, did you learn anything from him? I mean, do, uh, do, do I, only second and third hands hearing it from people like Jerry Kramer and, and uh, Max McGee. I mean, he would love Max McGee, and he'd find him every night. And uh, Max McGee and Paul Horning would always sneak out the window, and he had a $100 fine for the first, uh, if you will, late fee and 200 and 500 And Horning kept sneaking away, and he kept saying, uh, Mr. Horning, I, th I hope she's as good as the money you're paying to see her. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... Uh, How about Yogi Berra? Was he as clever as, as reported... Yogi, after the fact. Yogi's a wonderful person. But, but was he that clever with everything? You know, there's all these quotes all the time. Listen, if anybody who wrote on the back of one of my baseball books, uh, what Bert Sugar doesn't know about baseball, nobody knows. <laughs> I haven't figured out what the hell it meant. Yet. But let me tell you something. I once asked Yogi, I said, Yogs, what did you mean when you said when you come to a fork in the road, take it? One of his great yeah, lines. Yeah, right. He said, that's easy. I live at the end of a circle. Whether you go left or right, you come to my driveway. And I go, this guy's making sense. <laughs> well, you're wonderful. You're just great. I have such a respect for you. Well, Joey, I always love coming on your show and watching, watching all the people pass I by. Know. Isn't this fun? Yeah, because this is the greatest location in the country. It is, and you have a mirror on the world. I think if I can take a moment with, with your book here, uh, you got one called Boxing, The Ultimate Book of Boxing Lists. And while we're still reading books... And if you don't God, have a book, you can Kindle God it. God bless. Yeah. And, and, and it's a fun book. It's got lists in there and some by other contributors, one to ten, listing them and giving reasons. Muhammad Ali, who gives us a list of the greatest heavyweight champions, does not put his own name in there. I guess it's the, either humility or carry it in where you want. Did you like Howard Cosell? I had problems with Howard. <laughs> You're great. You're Hello, great. this is How Bad Cosell speaking of sports. <laughs> Do we have a, a website? You got a website? I don't even know what a web is. You don't care. No, <laughs> I don't have a cell phone. I don't use a computer. I type. Well, you're great. You're and great. I, have, I have fun doing it. In fact, uh, listen, I, I'm writing two more books now, even as we, not as we speak, I'm sitting here. With that <laughs> one. But I'm writing two, and I'm, I'm enjoying myself, as you are, Joey. And I, next time I write the ultimate book of list list, I'll put you in there as one of the ten people I enjoy coming to see the most. Thank you. Thank you. You're a delight. You're a great man. Thank you. So Bert Sugar, who is a national treasure, he doesn't like to be hearing that maybe, but he truly is. And we're going to be right back with Rick Younger. Hang in there. I'll see y'all in a little bit because, uh, you know, I was thinking about maybe I should hit a pose like that. Like, what about that? Hi, I'm Howard Dvorkin, the founder of Consolidated Credit. For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of Americans just like you. We've helped nurses and doctors. We've helped police officers and firefighters. We've helped homemakers and home builders. We've helped over 5 million people suffering from credit card debt. And now we want to help you. Consolidated Credit is the one company you can trust. Our exclusive Freedom Quest program can help you find options and solutions to your financial challenges. We can reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, save you thousands in interest and fees, and help you get out of debt fast. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. We've helped over 5 million people. Let us help you. You're one call away from financial freedom. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-440-2181. 1-800-440-2181. Picture wonderful guests, terrific music, and comics that are really funny, and a host that's okay. Uh, that's me, Joey Reynolds, on NBC's New York Nonstop, 
And what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ market site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. Customarily, a lot of people have made theme songs for me, including the Four Seasons years ago with Big Girls Don't Cry, which was my theme song. It, uh, it, we haven't played it, haven't done any of that on the show, because I don't want anybody to think that we're trying to live in 1960-something. Uh, but, but some people have made new ones for us, and I want to put them on the air in the next couple of weeks. And if you, if you want to know where we're going with the show, we're going to probably, one of these days, be interactive, because I want you guys to uh, do all the work. That's, it makes it an easier job for me. I have less to do if you do it, <laughs> which is one of the secrets of Larry King, right? You know, you sit there, uh-huh, hello, Cleveland. You know, and then you just listen to what someone's saying, and that's it. It's wonderful. Uh, and, and Rick Younger does a lot of my work. I'm bringing him out here to do some light dusting. Here he is right now, Rick Younger, star of stage, screen, and commercials. <laughs> and just simply uh, a, good, <laughs> a good friend. <laughs> oh, God. Hi, Rick. How are you? How you doing, man? Good. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> So I have some more sugar. Yes, yes, <laughs> some more sugar, man. You know, uh, last time I came here, you became my, my new father, so I oh, that's right, I forgot. only right that I get a hug. I forgot. Yes. Thank you. Man, I, how you going to forget your son, man? Well, probably because I had a will. <laughs> uh, all right, well, it's good to be here, man. No, it's money. It's money, you know, and when you're in the family, uh, the kids are never off the payroll. All right, well, I'm glad to be on the payroll. I know you are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's some resids. <laughs> all right, I like resids. <laughs> now, I, I, I've been following your career yes. again, uh -huh. you know, because I, I'm anxious to see you do one of these talk shows like this. All right. Well, see, this is a perfect training. But not this one. No, well, I'm, I'm here to learn under the, your watchful eye, like oh, under your tutelage. I, I, just, I just think that, you know, uh, when Letterman was on, he was actually under the cape of Johnny Carson. Uh -huh. That sounds suspicious. But, you know, I mean, Johnny Carson had another hour, right? right? Yeah. And he gave it to Letterman, or, you know, they made a business deal. It was okay. not, not something you give away. Yeah. Uh, I think... At one time, when Letterman went to CBS, he gave it to Tom Snyder. Right. Okay. Snyder had uh, an hour. Okay. And now I guess Craig Ferguson, or you know, they, they, he owns those shows. You know, right, they, right. usually the big shot owns the little Look, shot. I'll, I'll just give me 15 minutes after this is over. No, no, no. You've got to ask for more. <laughs> you, you're, you're not All right, doing, then I'll take the rest like, of the night from what? This is over at two. I'll take this from two to no, six. No, you, you got it wrong. Well, you got to have the hour before me. Oh, all right. We need, you need warm to, it up. Yeah, you need to warm it up. See, you're an opening act. Oh, okay. Because you sing and you dance. You do too many good things. I, hey, man, my theory, my motto is what do he don't do? They should have that underneath. Right now, they have Rick Younger, comedian. There's a Rick Younger, yeah, comedian. What, just a question say, mark. What do he don't do? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we didn't do this last time. I don't know if we can even do this because we haven't What's rehearsed that? anything. What's that? Uh, I want to bring you over to the piano. Oh, yeah, you probably don't want to do that. No, maybe I don't. You don't yeah, play? I, no, I haven't played in so long, so it's. Uh, oh, it no, would be, I don't. I don't would, want to do that. That would be then. good. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I really enjoyed you with uh, Bert Sugar, though. Yeah. Yeah. I actually just yesterday I read uh, he, he reviewed. You know, he gave a review of uh, the Fighter, the movie with Mark Wahlberg oh, and know um, and uh, Christian Bale, and he was saying that this is one of the best fight movies in, in terms of like the actual fighting in the movie, one of the best fight movies of all time. I haven't seen it myself, though. Um, but as a member of the Screen Actors Guild, you know, I do get a lot of screeners to watch yeah. when the war season comes. So I did get to see Social Network and The King's Speech, which I liked, yeah. but I had to watch it a second time because first time I was a little messed up because I thought it was going to be a documentary on Martin Luther King. Oh. And uh, <laughs> I was about halfway through, and I was like, when's the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King going to show up? 
you know. <laughs> so, wrong, wrong king. Yeah, 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 you know. So I got it together and watched it the second time. Yeah. Oh, great! It was great. Well, you know, it's tough. You you know, you don't live in, you don't live in my neighborhood, but in Harlem, where I live, uh -huh. we have named the streets after people now. Right. I took my daughter to the train on Saturday. She uh -huh. was here on Friday night. And, uh, and I, I got confused because they can make these names up now. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard right, is right. one. They don't call it doctor, but Martin Luther King Boulevard. And then there's, uh, who, there's a couple other guys. Adam like, Clayton Powell. Well, that, he Malcolm X. Malcolm X, I know. Do they have a Marcus Garvey? Because I know they got a Marcus Garvey. And there's Brooklyn. someone else. There's someone I didn't, I didn't get. There was uh, another. There, Jimmy, Jimmy Jenkins. Are they like, no. Is he just got a know? small dead end street. Don't yeah. go down Jimmy Jenkins. On a cul-de-sac. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I know the uh, the streets are named after uh -huh. Douglas. Oh, Frederick Douglas. Who was Frederick Douglas? You don't know who Frederick no, Douglas No, I don't. Is? He uh, invented Afro Sheen. Oh. No, so, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he was an abolitionist. <laughs> he, was, he was one of the, uh, like, he was an abolitionist. Uh, he was a, a great statesman back in uh, around the Civil Civil War era. Was he a black guy? He was a black guy. Well, this is it's a lot of history, month. right? It's a lot of you know, it's a lot of Frederick Douglass High Schools. My mother, really, my I, mother was actually afraid of Frederick Douglass. The reason I'm, you know, if you see pictures of Frederick Douglass, he's got a lot of hair, and you know, the pictures were a little scary. My mother grew up afraid of Frederick Douglass. But uh, she went to Frederick Douglass High School and became valedictorian. I guess that was her way of fighting back against the fear of Frederick Douglass. Well, I, 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 I don't fear or know too much about any of these figures. I guess that's why it's important to have a Black History Month. You know, see? Yeah. And look, you're that's still right. learning. This year, that's you right. learned about Frederick Douglass. That's right, exactly. You know what? Something you should also learn. This is a little, little known Black History fact concerning me and Martin Luther King. Um, I always compare uh, Obama to Martin Luther King in this sense. My mother has countless pictures of Barack Obama in the house, and it reminds me of how it was when I grew up. My grandmother had so many pictures of Martin Luther King in the house, so I thought he was one of my uncles. <laughs> I just thought he was one of my uncles who didn't come around a lot. I figured he was a preacher. You know, I could tell because he had on a robe, but I said, he's a preacher. He's traveling a lot. He's out there representing the family well, and maybe one day he'll come past the house. And then I eventually found out that, that was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Well, <laughs> that's black folks. So we we call him by all his titles, the Reverend Doctor Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, that's too yeah, long a name yeah. for me. <laughs> I, all I know is that all of this is good for my nav system because now I I may not have known the history of these guys, but I now know where I'm well, driving. So, you know, and, and if and if it starts with the navigation system to you actually learning the knowledge, then hey, it, it all works out. And fine. I know one thing for sure that wherever there's Martin Luther King, you know where the chicken is. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for that one. <laughs> well, you know, hey. We're going to be right back. You, you second, need to know what a chicken we, is. i got to know because, you know, yeah. I, we're having a bucket of fun here. Uh, <laughs> Original recipe for Now, you know, you know I, I, uh, we got a group called Just a Little Bit. All right. Yeah, or, you know, last time we had one that's called Enough is Enough. I like Just a Little Bit. <laughs> but Just a Little Bit's coming. Yeah, All right. I like and that. And you're going to hang around. You're yeah, I want to get a Rick little Rick Younger, bit. one of my favorite friends, and my son. <laughs> my, yes, your son. Yeah. We'll be we'll be right back with the uh, with the little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> What's up? What's good, baby? Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, 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 I'm fitness celebrity Jennifer Nicoli. And if you're busy like me, then stay tuned because I'm excited to share with you the most innovative piece of exercise equipment ever. Introducing the Ab Circle Pro, the fastest, easiest way to have the flat washboard abs and the sexy V-shape you've always wanted. Are you struggling to lose those love handles nobody loves? Now there's a machine so advanced, it targets your entire core, upper, middle, and lower abs, and even your obliques, all in one circular motion as it aerobic burns fat in just minutes a day. The secret is the Ab Circle Pro combines cardio and abs to burn fat, while its unique friction-free track uses the momentum of gravity to target your entire midsection in a full circular motion, firing your core like no other machine has ever done. You'll firm and flatten your stomach in just weeks, not months. We guarantee it. Best of all, it's fun and easy and takes just three minutes a day. And watch this. 
Simply remove the pin, and the Ab Circle Pro becomes a fat-burning bun and thigh machine. On the Ab Circle Pro, I lost almost three dress sizes in a few short weeks. With the Ab Circle Pro system, I've now lost 60 pounds, I feel great, and I'm one hot mama. And now, through this exclusive TV offer, the Ab Circle Pro can be yours to try in your home for 30 days for just $14.95. And if you call within the next 10 minutes, we'll send you Jennifer Nicole Lee's complete Lose Your Love Handle system, which includes our three-minute express workout and nutritional guide absolutely free. That's everything you need to transform that body from flab to ab. You have nothing to lose but inches, so pick up the phone and call now. Call 1-800-709-1301 to try AppCircle Pro for $14.95 plus shipping with credit card order. Call now for a free upgrade to priority processing so you'll get your AppCircle system in 7 to 10 days or less. That's 1-800-709-1301. Call now. show is getting a good reputation for, uh, for the music that we have on the air here, and uh, we want to keep it. And we, we asked just a little bit to come here tonight, and a sensational band. It's a, it's, it's a collection of music that you don't get so much anymore. Everybody knows how to play. <laughs> so uh, the saxophone player is a little, he's a little bit on the pushy side. <laughs> but other than that, you know, uh, the rest of the band is still speaking to each other, <laughs> which is very uncommon without drugs. So here they are now. Just, just a little bit goes a long way. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit in the house tonight. We got Baltimore, Cleveland, Chicago, Southside, Bronx, New York, H Town, baby. You know what I'm talking about? Just a little bit. We up in here, New York City. Joey Reynolds, how you feeling, baby? It's going down just a little bit. What you call it? They call it gang. kind of funny like these smooth jazz cats out here doing this music for the money now you can have gangsta funk you can have gangsta soul you can have gangsta latin even gangsta rock and roll now throw your hands in the air if you feel what i'm saying gangsta what gangsta what gangsta what everybody
Where's the applause? Where is you guys? <laughs> Come on, let's gotta make some applause here. <laughs> Oh, That's the only thing, you know, this is, this is the only thing. It's, you're in a room, and it's awkward because you're so great, and there's nobody drunk enough. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to talk to you when we come back. we got another guest coming out, and you guys just stand on the side for a while, all right? And we got free food, which is, you know. Tonight's not shrimp night, I'm sorry. That's tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> We're gonna, we're, this show has got about as much chance as food on JetBlue. <laughs> <laughs> or any airline, you're right. No, we're, we're really appreciative of having you here. You guys are great. Laqueen, right? Laqueen? Laqueen? Laqueen. 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 All right, Alex Trayman's coming up, and we'll talk to these guys in a little bit, and they're going to play some more, too. Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got to be. BAMS Auto Body, located on Liberty Avenue in Ozone Park, is a one-stop shop equipped with all the latest technologies to fix your car or truck right the first time. We work with all major insurance companies and specialize in collision, theft, and vandalism repair. Call any time to check your vehicle status. Speak with our dedicated and knowledgeable staff. We offer a 100% written guarantee on all repairs and a lifetime warranty on all paint repairs. BAMS Auto Body, we'll get your vehicle fixed no matter what. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. Picture wonderful guests, terrific music, and comics that are really funny, and a host that's okay. Uh, that's me, Joey Reynolds, on NBC's New York Nonstop, and what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ Market site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Kaiser role. Uh, Rick, Rick uh, Younger is here, and Rick is, uh, uh, he's like that everything bagel, where they got everything, <laughs> everything on it. You're everything, right, Rick? I, everything. I, you know, I try to, like I said, what do he don't do? I try to do a little bit of everything, man. Well, I actually want to get that band. I want to hire them to be what? like, just to follow me around and be my theme music. <laughs> Especially with that wah wah guitar, wah guitar, wah wah that's, that's perfect bopping down the street music. You don't get enough of that these days. You had a lot of that back in the 70s. Shaft had that. And I that's think it's right. time for that to come back. You know, just walking down the street with some wah wah playing and some congas in the back. You know, so if y'all back there and y'all can hear me, Ben, work on that horn riff. <laughs> and we'll just walk down the street, you know, we'll see how it works out. We'll wait till it warms up, though. Now, you know, we're trying to get Pepsi as a sponsor. Oh, right? yeah. And Pepsi. this is the max. Yeah, and you, good, you have them out here. Now, you know, they had a, they had a commercial on Sunday at the Super Bowl. I thought it was quite amusing. It was, uh, 
it was a, a black guy and his wife, and his wife was trying to get him to eat right. So every time he would try to eat something, she would come and take it from him and everything. And so he finally goes to a park to be by himself, and he pulls out a Pepsi Max, starts to drink it. He looks over, his wife is there. He thinks she's about to, you know, take, this, take the Pepsi from him. But he looks over, and she's drinking one, too. And so finally, he's like, OK, she's happy. Pepsi Max must be a good thing. Then a white woman run, walks, runs by and sits beside him and smiles at him. And he smiles back. And then he looks over and sees his wife on the other side. And she's mad. And she picks up the Pepsi Max and throws it at him. He ducks. It hits the white woman, knocks her out. Then they, they grab each other's hand and run off. And, uh, it was funny because it, it caused a bit of an uproar. Why the, why the black woman always got to be mad? Why the black man always got to be looking at a white woman? I said, did you see what she had on? It's like, that's why he looked at the white woman. <laughs> but did you see that in the end, they ran off together? So like, hey, let a brother look at the white woman. She knocked them out, and then they ran off together. Black love prevails was the moral right. of that story. And, uh, and Pepsi Max was, uh, was responsible for keeping black love going strong. This makes up for my bad chicken comment. <laughs> oh, that was, that was a good chicken comment. There, there's no such thing as a bad chicken comment. And the, the only bad chicken comment is we're out of chicken. You say that, that's bad. That's a bad chicken comment. Don't say that. It's like, what? It's like, don't call me late for dinner, and don't tell me we're out of chicken. I see all the ads for the Colonel now. You know, they got a special price. It says oh the goodness. price is so low, it's got to end in 30 days. <laughs> I was thinking, what are they going to oh, do? Oh, believe me, I am, I'm marking my calendar because, you know, I, was on, I'm on, I do Weight Watchers. So I got I to gotta, you know, spread out my Kentucky yeah. Fried Chicken eating. But it, I'm like, if I calculate this right, I can get maximum chicken intake within the limited time. Right. When was the, the exact date that the Colonel kicked the bucket? Um, I don't know. I think he did. <laughs> it was, it, so this is the celebration of the the of the. Remember coach? that Claire Peller when they had her on Wendy's? Yeah, we did the beef. McDonald's commercials. So yes. We can talk about all this stuff. <laughs> but the, she I'm, was a, I'm trying to get a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial. Are you? I. Well, me when, when, next time you come out here, bring out a bucket. I just. Wait, you know, don't don't tempt me. It's fine. I mean, yeah. you know, it's okay. I, I, I'll do it. But Claire Peller, they they had they finally got her a gravestone, and they I think they put the little sesame on there. You know. <laughs> This is an unbelievable world we live in. Everything's commercial. That's why I'm saying all this stuff. I mean, we're living in a commercial world. Oh, we got to bring these guys up? All right. <laughs> there's a film. There's a film that's called Uranium. Here's Alex Trayman now. Hi, Alex. Sorry, I forgot all about him. <laughs> oh, man. I got to do my own stuff again. Alex, sorry. And what a wonderful film. It was canceled in Canada. That means it's a hit. <laughs> Hi, Alex. How are you? Good to meet you. Hey, how you doing? And this is Rick Younger. You know, we're just sitting here talking about chicken. <laughs> Speaking of being chicken, yeah. now are you, uh, this film that you made here, we got a little clip of it, you know, and I understand that it's quite good. None of us have seen it. I but saw it. No, I mean, <laughs> of the over other people here. here right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and usually, you know, you want to bring out a big celebrity and their, and their film, but I'm more into the directors because I think the director really makes the, like the show, you know, the show's mm -hmm. not good because of me. When it is good, it's because of Joe Valenti. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the show that's really, really uh, film is more of a director's medium. And Joe happens to be a film director also. But it's, 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 about, it's about you guys. So where are you from? Well, grew up here. Yeah. I've been born in Brooklyn, grew up in Jersey. Did you go to NYU, film uh, school? No. Where? No, I went to Yeshiva University uptown. They don't teach film there, do they? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I got my start as a journalist. Uh -huh. So you were writing, and, you, and, and what did you do? Meet somebody who had a camera? Well, uh, a little bit more complicated than that. Could be. But, uh, I mean, it, this generation is about that. Just yeah. can't help. The truth of the matter is, you can have a you know a cheap camera, and you can make your own film. It's just that simple. I but, know. Look at this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we just started interviewing uh, some of the top experts on Iran, and uh, once we did that, I realized that we're dealing with something much greater than just Iran and, and having nuclear weapons. Did you do anything with the art in Iran? Uh, with the art, do you know anything about the art that's been stolen? I don't know if you know this or not. I, I wish I had known you last year. I would have been able to tell you this. Um, I, I, I follow, you know, I like Turkey because Turkey is a moderate Muslim nation. Sure. And I believe they're a good model for Iran. Poli I don't do a lot of politics on the air because I'm, as everybody watches the show knows, I'm a political atheist. <laughs> but I've been around the world to different countries and I love what's happening in Turkey. They're, they're having a little fight. You know, they, sure. they're always going to fight. Uh, there's always going to be something here. 
you know, people don't, we don't agree in my family, how are we going to agree as a, as a world? But the, the thing that happens in Iran is that they need to be modeled somewhere. What, are they not following some sort of ideology somewhere else? Because the people seem to want freedom. Oh, the people in Iran are very moderate. I met a lot of Iranians yeah. during the process. They're polite, they're sophisticated, they're tech savvy, they're fashionable. And they're and, Western. Yeah, they're very proud of their culture, but they're very progressive. They want Western freedoms, they want democracy. They're really very good people. But the people that are ruling Iran are not them. They are crazy. All right, now in the, in the film, do you show that, that it's, a, it's a sin to lie in Iran to the people? Well, I don't know if that comes up in anything you've done because I haven't seen the film. No, it's not in the film, but uh, there is this idea of takia, which is the idea that you can lie if it advances the cause. I mean, that's, that's part of the, of the culture. Well, uh, the uh, Shah and, the sh and, and, the, and his wife had the greatest art collection in the world at one time. And when they abdicated or when they were removed, however way you look at it, right. Uh, they did not take the artwork with them. The art stayed. And some of the art is because of Western art has breasts and it shows nudity. That's offensive to the Muslim religion. So they put that in the basement of the places where, they, where the Shah lived. I guess palaces. He had many palaces. That's why I said basement. And, 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 and they never really did anything with the art, except they sold it for political reasons last year. Did you know that? No, but the, it's, it there's makes a lot, sense. Yeah. What, there's a lot of things that go on that I don't know what you touched on in the film, once again. We, right. Well, we, the, Iran, the, the movie is about Iran's nuclear program and Iran's sponsorship of terror for the past 30 years and Iran's brutality of its own citizens. Well, everybody has a nuclear program. Don't they? Right, but most people's the most countries' nuclear programs are legal, uh, and Iran's is completely illegal. And the question is, do you want leaders that have extreme ideology and have a history of killing people all over the world, including today, killing American troops in Iraq and Afghanistan? Do you want those people to have nuclear weapons? Do uh, is that do we vote on that? Is that something that we have a vote on? As I, I think it is. I mean, we're yeah. the greatest economic superpower in the world, and if someone's violating international law, like Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and, and others, by developing a program that's completely illegal, we've got the right to say that's unacceptable. I mean, that, that's you know. true. But what about the UN? Why doesn't the UN do that? Isn't that what we're, what it's for? Well, look who's who are the members the member state, states of the United Nations. I mean, there's so, so many uh, Muslim countries can comprise the United Nations. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of Western powers are actually complicit. They're actually helping Iran develop their nuclear program. So really, if we don't want Iran to have nuclear weapons, it's probably going to be up to us. Well, what are we going to do? Just say uh, we're cutting you off? As we've, we've tried the embargo, we've tried the surveillance, we've tried working through the United Nations. I think that's the last stand. Well, there are sanctions that we have legislated, and they're strong, but they're not being enforced. So we've got to enforce sanctions. And if we make life hard for the Iranian people, what's going to happen is what's happening now in Egypt. And you might see Iranians come out to the streets the same way they did in June 2009, yeah. uh, when Mahmoud Ahmadinejad was fraudulently reelected. If Iranians will come back out into the streets, they want to take their government back, but they're looking to us for moral support. They're looking for, to us to say, we support your cause for democracy, and we're going to help you. And we haven't done that yet. Are we going to have time to show this little clip here, or, what, or do we have to take a break? You want to show it yeah. now? All right, so where, where do we start with this thing? Set it up. You know, you, you could start in the beginning. I mean, I, the, the thing is that what this film does is that it, it kind of shows Ahmadinejad in his own words. And if I could say his name, I'd hate him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a I tough name. Like, yeah. Tough name. All right, so let's watch it. Let's see what we got here. John, یک ملت صاحب فناوری هستیست. و کسانی که با ملت ما میخوان حرف بزنند باید بدانند که با کدوم ملت دارن حرف میزنند اگر هم الان ندانند به زودی مجددن زمانی که سرشون به سنگ خواهد خورد From Tehran to the United Nations in New York President Ahmadinejad expresses his distaste for America and the international community Media outlets line up for interviews with a defiant Iranian president, as daily news reports focus on Iran's nuclear program. American and Western leaders have often labeled the Iranian regime a sponsor of terror and a violator of human rights. Yet, for more than 30 years, America has misread the guiding principles of the Islamic Republic. What happens when a regime that openly desires the destruction of nations obtains nuclear weapons? The world may suffer unthinkable consequences. 
Iran's nuclear program is not an isolated problem. It is the final component of an extreme doctrine that has held Iran's citizens and the international community hostage for more than 30 years. Wow. Alex Trayman, and he says the film is available online, too, if you want to see. You can really get into this. These are real serious things. I mean, you know, I joke around about a lot of things, but we're, we're talking about blowing up a planet. Yeah, the, this is a regime that has targeted America. Ahmadinejad talks about a world without America. He talks about wiping Israel off the map, and now he's going to have the weapons which might make that possible, and that's something that's very scary. Well, how do we always get caught up in this? How, why, are we, why are we in... in feeding them what they need to have to hurt us. Well, we've been doing it for the last 30 years. I mean, we misread the Iranian revolution in 1979. Imam Khomeini that came to power then is a brutal tyrant, but we called him some kind of saint. We said, this is a, a guy that we can work with, a moderate, and look what's happened, you know. And we continue to do that all the time. We're always taking people that uh, are going to be brutal tyrants and dictators and saying, no, these guys are moderates, and, and we're just wrong. And, and every president from Jimmy Carter on forward until Obama today has really uh, put us in a bad situation with regards to Iran. You know why? Because we're good people, and we're kind, and, we're, and, we're, and we follow the Ten Commandments. Yeah. That's our morality. Yeah. And so do they. So do they. I had a, a conference at the 79th Street Synagogue with three, three Palestinians and three Jews. And, uh, and, and I, when I stayed in the present, there was no anger. But as soon as I got into the past of who owns what, that's when the skirmish began and the fight began over property and territorial uh, rights and, 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 and religious beliefs. Have you been to Israel? Sure. Of All right. When you're in Jerusalem and you go to the old city, there's no contest. I mean, everybody is in harmony. It is truly the Holy Land when you're in the Holy Land. But as soon as, as, soon as they go home at night, I think, they get on that bus and they go home wherever everybody goes, then they start to go to their respective tribes and they come back with this anger. And, and, and it, we, we can all, we're capable of all, everybody getting along. That's why Obama is the way he is. You want to put everybody together so we can all figure out how, to, how we can, you know, I'm going to sound like a real liberal, right? But I really believe that, that uh, what I'm doing on the show here, I'm trying to put people's yeah. sanity in place. But the problem is that the leaders of Iran just don't think like you and I think. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? What are you you want to bomb them and then do the same thing? We did that already. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, that's what we did in Iraq. We had to lift our military to create democracy there. But in Iran, we got to realize that the Iranian people actually want this, and they're willing to do the dirty work for us. So what are we supposed to do? We've got to give moral support. We've got to... Uh, we are giving moral support. Not really. You're saying I agree with you. No, you're saying it, but we need to have our president say that we support the people of Iran, not the leaders of Iran. And that's, that's the problem. We've got to say... You know that those companies that are doing business with the with Iran's leaders, you know that they need to be sanctioned. We can't give people the opportunity to be funding Iran's regime when Iran is just giving that money over uh, to a nuclear program. When they inside Iran, they have kids that are are going to school in shifts of three hours a day in buildings that are broken down. You know, wearing a, a shoe on one foot and a slipper on the other because they don't have any money. You know, you know. So well, I, what are you going to say? We're talking about it, and we've seen the clip. And we know it's online, but if someone's watching, how, how can, exactly can they find it online? Well, you just go to the website, iraniumthemovie.com. Iraniumthemovie.com. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. All right, yes, because I was listening to the conversation. I was like, yeah. this is a lot. It's this great dialogue going back and forth, and we see the clip, and it, it really pulls you in. And I'm, you know, I'm very interested, and I was like, I hope that we get the information out there so that if anybody's watching, they can find it for themselves. Yeah, we got, we got to talk about this. Yeah. I mean, they're pointing nuclear weapons down our backs. I mean, they, they put targets on the backs of 300 million Americans with their nuclear weapons and their comments. We've got the right to talk about it. Yeah. Well, you always have the right to talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, not in Iran. That's the whole thing. You know, here in America, if you want to criticize the president and you're good at it, they give you a television program. Yeah. But in Iran, <laughs> if you criticize the president, you know, you're going to be tortured and possibly executed. And well, I don't United. think they're talking to uh, uh, the president of Iran's wife to see whether she's going to go to see to, to the uh, uh, royal wedding. You know, I mean, we, we are a little different culture here. Yeah, definitely. And that's what we got to understand. Yeah, we, yeah. we are different. All right. Well, let's see your film, Ir Iranium. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a good name, it's catchy, and also <laughs> yeah. Rick wants it free. Rick, you got it. <laughs> All right. I got a DVD for Hey, you. and everyone, go out, uranium.themovie.com. 
And You're that's great. Alex yeah, Freeman, <laughs> uh, who, is, who is going to pay Rick for this <laughs> wonderful load of plugs. No, thanks for that, man. Thanks for that. Coming you, up man. is uh, is Jessica Phillips and Tad Wilson. And thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank your work. you. My pleasure. Thank All you. Right. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on. celebrities have something to say, they head for the stoop. This is my stoop. I gotta come to the stoop. Talk stoop. I feel like we're so close that we could kiss. This is a whole other kind of stoop. It's where Cat Greenleaf gets people talking. What? What? Really? Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Naked, do you mind if I call you Naked? Tell me something good. The best of New York on a stoop in Brooklyn. The celebrity butts that have graced the stoop. Talk stoop. Weeknights at 8 on New York Nonstop. Sponsored by Cozy. Life should be delicious. I'm an anchor and a pilot. I am passionate about chocolate. I am a ballerina. I'm the daughter of a jazz musician. I am a four-time New York Golden Glove champ. Oh, I'm my grandpa. Yeah, I'm a grandma. I'm interested in the story behind the story. I'm making this look natural. I am glamorous. I am an anchor and a blues girl. I am all about my craft. I am New York. I am New York. I'm a New Yorker. I am New York. I am New York. New Yorkers, LX New York. It's the story of the moment, a taste of the best. It's opening night, a helping hand, the characters of New York, the spirit of New York, told our way. LX New York, weekdays at five. We're all over town. So mad about all this stuff with with Iran and uh, Iraq and everything that begins with I ends with mean. Uh, it's it's just not our nature, you know. I don't think we're created that way, and it's uh, it's a tough one because uh, there's no no simple answer, and we all have to exist on the planet. And the uh, ideology is so strange to ours. Uh, we're we're in this country. We're used to sharing and and being generous with people about everything and we have freedom you know freedom is really a wonderful commodity you could even screw up the national anthem and continue to work <laughs> uh it's it's one of those things you know i mean i guess if you do that in iran you you probably sent to a lesser nation <laughs> i don't know where there is one uh because that's pretty low i don't i don't like what's going on i mean i don't think anybody does but you can't there's no simple answer and and the only thing that i could think of is that we continue to either uh, be kind and generous and serving and, and uh, for each other. And uh, there's a, a, a group that wants to ignore everything that's going on. There's another group that wants to get in there and destroy everything that's against us. And then there's another group still that thinks that there's hope and faith and charity and all of this. And I'm, I'm in that group. I, I still think that we say our prayers, move our feet, and keep going in the direction of communication. Because I, saw, I heard something very wonderful, and I want to share it with you. Um, on the television, as long as I have a platform here, you know, I mean, let's face it, I got a TV show, so let's put it on the air. <laughs> it's not, uh, 
not a bad place to be. It's a soapbox, and, I, and, I, and I'm not picking a side, but I will tell you this much, that uh, I heard the president of General Electric at a recent uh, uh, show, at the Consumer Electronics Show, he got up and he had a keynote speech, and he had said, the chairman of General Electric, and he, and he said that um, when people are doing business with each other, they're usually not fighting. And, and you know, we're in a commercial world, uh, and I don't care how, how fancy anybody's religion is, they still like what we like. They like money, they like to have freedom that money brings, they like to have power that money brings, and they like to be recognized, acknowledged, and uh, fame is, is, is pretty important. I mean, otherwise they wouldn't have a president of Iran who comes here and pounds his head on the table like Castro did years ago when he went to the Hotel Therese and fried chicken. You know, I mean, there are people who do things because they want to be noticed. They're like little kids. We never grow up emotionally, some of us, and spiritually. Some are stuck. And you have to be patient with them. And I, you know, I have a, I have a good deal of patience with my own kids, and I, I expect that we'll have one as a nation. That's the only thing I could say that's comforting. You know, nothing else is going to be comforting at this point in history. I, I don't like living under the gun. You know, if someone's going to be at our door, they're going to blow us up. You know, that whole thing, and uh, they're going to destroy everything we ever built. I mean, they don't want to die either. And, uh, and, and they certainly want to. These guys have families too, you know. Now, some of them are, are remember that, that bad joke, you know, they, what is it uh, with the, the Palestinians? They blow up so fast, you know. Uh, the the, the uh, uh, world has is, is got a lot of different people in it. And we're in New York. I mean, you know, let's face it, look, look behind me on Times Square. Uh, we got 14 million people here, and there's a, a lot of maniacs. And, and there are a lot of good ones, too, a lot of good people. So you got to kind of, like, just stay in faith and move along. That's what I do. I try to stay in a very strident way, in a, in a uh, surrounding myself with, with people who are of, of, of like. Uh, when I was a kid, we used to say in school that like seeks like, and birds of a feather flock together. And then when I got a little older, it was uh, said that uh, opposites attract. That was the way you used to date in college, opposites attract. <laughs> and later on, uh, I learned it in my uh, recovery that the real message is sick picks sick. And that's what I'm saying, sick picks sick. So if you wanna stay sick, keep hanging around with all those drug dealers and all the, all the cons and everybody else that, that's negative. And countries that, that are ill-willed, hang around with them, support them if you wanna be sick. If you wanna be sane and you want sanity is knowing right from wrong and practicing it, then you hang around with people who are of the same spirit. So kind of pick and choose, that's, that's the individual walk that each of us is challenged with. And you know, I'm gonna bring Wayne Dyer on here in a couple of weeks. Wayne's gonna come in from Hawaii. He's one of my good friends. You maybe have seen him on public television. And I learned a lot from him. He's a, a pretty good self-help guy. There's a lot of them around. And they're not all uh, uh, just selling books, you know. I mean, some of these guys are really, really smart. And they, and they have things to say that we need to hear. So that's that. And then another night, I will show you the little walk that I had with Mother Teresa from uh, 1999, 98. All right, let's take, a, let's take another, another moment here to bring out two people who are stars on Broadway, and, and both of them are wonderful. Jessica Phillips and Tad Wilson are gonna do the walk. Come on in here, you guys. And uh, uh, Jessica was in Les Mis, you, you maybe have seen her, Next to Normal, which is a great show. I think both these guys were in that, and they look like they're next to normal. <laughs> she looks, you look better than normal, my darling. How are you? Hey, guys. Hey, how you oh, doing? thanks for having us. Hey, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for being patient through my BS. But it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's, my, it's my belief. I, I, I figure if I have a show, I mean, I, I don't think Marlon Brando was right to talk about Indians at the Academy Award, and maybe uh, Bono is probably... Sorry that he got sixty million dollars for Spider Man. You know, I don't know what someone else thinks. Sixty five, yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm in a place where I really wanted to say a couple of things when it's appropriate. You know, I figure we got a captive audience that are watching if someone's watching this show right now and they got this far, they must want to know something. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, who would sit through right. this crap if they don't want to know something? <laughs> <laughs> and there must be searching. You know, sure. I mean, more than channel surfing. Sure. You know, I mean, the only surf that I care about is the one that's over there at the, uh, at the beach. <laughs> right. All right, now, you guys are great. You're, you're, you got, you're accomplished actors. There was a film mm -hmm. which was called 
Priscilla, what is that thing called? Queen Priscilla, of the Queen of the Desert. Now, yeah. wasn't that a wonderful, big, successful picture? It was. It really yeah. was. It won yeah. Won several Academy Awards. Yep. For costumes. Yep. And One for uh, costumes. Was that a drag show or something? Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, the story is about uh, three drag queens who take yeah. a bus ride across the uh, Australian I saw outback. That. I saw that. Wasn't yeah. uh, uh, Terrence Stamp? Who was in that thing? Terrence, Terrence Stamp. Stamp. And who else? Yeah. Terrence Stamp and who else? And there then were... Hugo Weaving. Yeah. yeah. Huh? <laughs> nice. <laughs> what? I pulled that out. Um, who yeah. else was in it? Um, uh, they're Australian. I and many uh, more. I, I, no, many, many, more. many very, many very talented yes. actors. All right, so you have yeah. you had you had a, a, a motion picture that was a big success, and it's going to Broadway. And you yeah, guys well, are that's make... what happens. I mean, you can see we've got we've got eight eight big musicals coming to Broadway this spring, right. and, and this is uh, one of them. This is one of them, right. and it's based on a movie as. Many successful Broadway shows are. Yeah. So next and next uh, week you start rehearsal for this thing. We do. We start rehearsals on the fifteenth. Yeah. Right. Well, we had we had. When does the money roll in? <laughs> uh, that's for a good question. <laughs> for yeah. both of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're on a break now. Um, what for money? Uh, we, <laughs> well, that too. Yeah. That's, we started in yeah. Toronto. We did our out of town trip in Toronto. There. How did it go? It went it was great. great. Toronto's great. It was great. Toronto's great. Yeah, we had it a was good cold. Time. Well, but I'm from Buffalo. Was, don't I don't want to right, hear this stuff. Right. <laughs> no, it, was, it was great. I mean, we were in an 1800 seat house, and it was like a rock concert at the end yeah, of every yeah. show. I mean, yeah. people just stood up and screamed. And it's a. I mean, the thing is, it's huge. You know, the costumes are yeah. amazing. The sets are incredible. So, are you impressed with it? I am. Like my yeah, set here. Are you impressed with this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, yeah this is we, great. <laughs> Good answer. Glass on our set, but. <laughs> no, wouldn't you like to have a set where you actually see the audience outside? Wait, that would be fantastic. Would be uh, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Remember yeah. that uh, "Never Gonna Dance"? Remember that thing a couple of years ago? That was Fred Astaire. There was a lot oh. of great songs. It yeah, was yeah, Noah yeah. and Noel. They mm -hmm. were two young actors, and they were doing Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. it was Ginger Rogers, but it was it was based on a film, and and it's got all those great songs, like uh, "The Way You Look Tonight." Mm -hmm. Lovely, just the way you look tonight. You know, that song yeah. comes from You're that. A good with Fred Astaire. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so the show was a skyscraper in New York, and they were putting the stuff in. And the week of the show, they couldn't get it in. So they didn't call it Never Gonna Dance, they called it Never Gonna Fit. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, you know, we had a hard time getting our, uh, our bus into a, yeah. a house here in New York. That's right. we, we have an actual bus on stage yeah. that that um it's that the rolls. title character yeah it's it is a beautiful beautiful thing well miss saigon yeah. used a helicopter they had a helicopter yeah. famously right. you know that. yeah. that's right that's yeah. all this bus doesn't yeah. do is fly and i that's think true. uh sometimes i think with uh, bernadette to uh, peters uh, sometimes mm -hmm. it was hard to get her ego into this oh, oh. Hey, hey come on wow Can watch we say that on tv <laughs> talk about never gonna fit <laughs> <laughs> He was looking around at yeah. make sure Bernadette yeah. Peters well, was like right, standing behind this whole like, I heard right. that. She hangs out down here. <laughs> I don't want to get on her bad side. But you side. guys are also are at the Triad. You got a show coming up with yeah, yeah. country we music? Have, yes. We have a big country music concert yeah. this Sunday yeah. at 9.30 at the Triad. Right. All right, now, Sunday, Sunday night's a perfect night to go to see you guys because there's no Super Bowl. See, there's I agree no with Bowl. that. I yeah. So everybody needs to get tickets. 9.30 is a, is a great time to have a show mm. because I about worn out everything else to do all day. <laughs> <laughs> and you know where it's right down the street, the triad's right down the street from those those bargain hot dogs on the corner. Grace That's right. Papaya. Yes, Grace yeah. Papaya. Papaya. Yeah, where, you yeah. Get, where they have the, uh, the inflation buster, mm -hmm. right? Right. What is yeah. that, uh, 50 cents or yeah. uh, well, he's a, he's They a, also have he's a very a, good breakfast deal. You can get eggs, potatoes, and toast for 99 cents. Yeah. I'm like, for 99 cents, I'll pay an extra dollar for three strips of bacon. We can make it a real <laughs> yeah, meal. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but Rick is on Weight Watchers, so he counts it as points. Yes, that's, well, One of those hot dogs, strip. You, you'd be right. laid up for a week. <laughs> right. I shouldn't be saying that. What's the guy got to do to get some chicken out here? <laughs> that's that's our theme tonight. That's you're here. Right. You are here chicken. during. And if we don't get right. the chicken here tonight, we're going up to Martin Luther King Boulevard. Okay. Don't okay. Who's the I got it. <laughs> Oh, they're going to start calling me Imus. I get in trouble. I used to work with him, you know. Well, you know that. <laughs> Rick's life was at NBC. You know, he's on the Today Show a lot. Nice. Uh, with yeah. panels and, yeah. and discussion. Yes. And also, he does commercials and stuff. He's yeah. Yeah. pretty pretty clever guy. <laughs> he's now in the new film called Uranium 2. Uh, uh, that's what we're talking the about. We're the I got it. Yeah. <laughs> What's that place where you go if you want the film? What's it called again? 
If I want the film? If you wanted Iranium, the if film. I want ar oh, IraniumTheMovie.com. Yeah, I just want to be sure you got that down because yes. I know you're bonded. And here. if you can't figure that out, just go to RickYunger.net, leave me an email, and I'll tell you how to get to IraniumTheMovie.com. <laughs> we're we're going to start showing the, the movie off your site. Right, just come yeah. on down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to embed it right there at RickYunger.net. Absolutely. And I'm going to say, hey, if you like this, go to IraniumTheMovie.com. And if it's Sunday night and it's like about 9.30 when you finish, go on over to the Triad. That's right. Yeah. That's triad and NYC.com for tickets. <laughs> Would anybody ever do this show without plugging something? Sure. I sure. gotta plug something. I mean, Go I ahead, just feel. I feel. Right. I, I it's your show. Something. You, got, you have mugs. Yeah, you I'm not. Right. I'm loving these. Yeah, but mugs. we're not selling them. You Look, know, you hey, got, you should. Like Frankie Avalon is what? selling his beauty all night you know? with JoeyReynolds.com. Go <laughs> yeah. pick up a mug. Mm -hmm. I'm you selling be, mine after gotta, the show. You gotta have something going. You know, like my abs. There you go. You got abs. I ab lid. <laughs> <laughs> now the, uh, the the performance that you're doing is is other than the Priscilla. I mean, you're doing songs. I yeah, want to yeah. get back to that for a minute. Cause yeah, we, I mean, we're Tad and I have known each other for a number of years, but yeah. we were lucky to be put in this project in the Priscilla project together. And um, because we had to go out of town, we had a lot of time. We had a lot of free time on our yeah. hands, and uh, and we we started uh, jamming together. We mm. both were working on country music projects on our own. Did you slip any of these songs into Les Mis? Re um, <laughs> I'm coming yeah, home. Yeah. <laughs> warm Not up, this time around. warm up the truck. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it turns out that uh, we we think alike musically, and uh, right. we decided to get to work on an album. And where are so you from? Well, I was born in Nashville. That's why. What yeah. about you? I'm originally from Augusta, Georgia. Well, you know who's going to be here in a couple of weeks is Tommy Cash, Johnny's brother. Yeah. Now, you know, Tommy wrote, there ain't no such thing as a good chain gang. <laughs> He's got a little bit of a warped sense of humor and a great, <laughs> great musical style. He and Hal Bynum, who wrote Lucille, and they're going to yeah. be here in a, in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's great. So and we you, should come back? You should really come back for that, because this is, you know, it's, it's, it's what we call countrypolitan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's yeah. ever since Eddie Arnold, there's been a crossover of sorts, sure. and Charlie Pride, with yeah. due respect. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, there's <laughs> been there's been a, a a lot of a lot of uh, uh, efforts, uh, Garth Brooks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and 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 they've moved it into a little bit more of a pop art, and oh, yeah. you know, than when I was a kid, which was all very uh, bluegrass. Right. right. I wasn't. I didn't like that so much. I didn't grow up with it. You know, right. I didn't grow up with fiddles around the house. Sure. Right. But uh, but I like the uh, the pop crossover stuff. It's it's melodic, and I'm older. You know, when you're older, you like different things. Right. Yeah. You know, you like something that you're used to. It's easy to listen to. I mean, yeah. it's a and, and we talk about how how similar it is to to show tunes, really, because it's all about the storytelling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And people hook into that. I mean, it's. Uh, are you going to do a song for us? We are. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, well then, let's, let's take a break okay. so that we can go get set up on our lavish Great. set here. We're going to try to move some of your scenery in here. You don't mind, do you? I don't we mind. we got a bus. Can we get the bus in here? Bus yeah, in we got here. a bus. That'd be yeah. great. It's Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> Model. <laughs> the little kid pushing it. Great. Nice. So you can make some money. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be right back and, and, and have a little performance. And you, we don't want to see what you got on this stage. <laughs> Nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Think I've about had enough of that. And, and if this show don't make it, this will become the biggest bomb in history. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be right back. <laughs> Dvork and the founder of Consolidated Credit. For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of Americans just like you. We've helped nurses and doctors. We've helped police officers and firefighters. We've helped homemakers and home builders. We've helped over five million people suffering from credit card debt. And now we want to help you. Consolidated Credit is the one company you can trust. Our exclusive Freedom Quest program can help you find options and solutions to your financial challenges. We can reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, save you thousands in interest and fees, and help you get out of debt fast. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. We've helped over 5 million people. Let us help you. You're one call away from financial freedom. Call Consolidated Credit now. 
1-800-440-2181. Picture wonderful guests, terrific music, and comics that are really funny, and a host that's okay. Uh, that's me, Joey Reynolds, on NBC's New York Nonstop, and what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ Market Site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. Some great music now. This is the country politics that we were talking about a little earlier. Uh, Jessica Phillips and Tad Wilson are here tonight. Can I call it that? You don't mind that, do you? Yeah. <laughs> so at the triad on Sunday at 9:30, you're going to hear stuff like this. Come on, you guys, do your thing here. <laughs>
Excellent. What great singers. Thank great. You. Yeah. Thank you very much. You guys are wonderful. So we'll see you at the triad at 9.30 on Sunday. Great. And then we'll That's see you great. with Priscilla in that uh, magic show in the, in the spring, I hope. Right. All right? That's right. And you'll come back before that. You come back anytime you want. Thank You're you. Always, Thanks, always invited Jeff. here. Thank you. Your family now. <laughs> and we'll share the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Country fried steak. There it is. They don't yeah. serve that in Canada. They, they're not serving that Iranian film in Canada either anymore. <laughs> We're going to be right back. Joey Reynolds is my name in case you want to mark it down somewhere on a, on a ratings book because uh, we, I guess we got good ratings. Somebody said we got good ratings. That's well, great. Well, we're not supposed to know about it, so I got a big mouth. We'll be right back. <laughs> I'm fitness celebrity Jennifer Nicoli. And if you're busy like me, then stay tuned because I'm excited to share with you the most innovative piece of exercise equipment ever. Introducing the Ab Circle Pro, the fastest, easiest way to have the flat washboard abs and the sexy V-shape you've always wanted. Are you struggling to lose those love handles nobody loves? Now there's a machine so advanced, it targets your entire core, upper, middle, and lower abs, and even your obliques all in one circular motion as it aerobically burns fat in just minutes a day. The secret is the Ab Circle Pro combines cardio and abs to burn fat, while its unique friction-free track uses the momentum of gravity to target your entire midsection in a full circular motion, firing your core like no other machine has ever done. You'll firm and flatten your stomach in just weeks, not months. We guarantee it. Best of all, it's fun and easy and takes just three minutes a day. And watch this. Simply remove the pin, and the Ab Circle Pro becomes a fat-burning bun and thigh machine. On the Ab Circle Pro, I lost almost three dress sizes in a few short weeks. With the Ab Circle Pro system, I've now lost 60 pounds, I feel great, and I'm one hot mama. And now, through this exclusive TV offer, the Ab Circle Pro can be yours to try in your home for 30 days for just $14.95. And if you call within the next 10 minutes, we'll send you Jennifer Nicole Lee's complete Lose Your Love handle system which includes our three-minute express workout and nutritional guide absolutely free that's everything you need to transform that body from flab to ab you have nothing to lose but inches so pick up the phone and call now Call 1-800-709-1301 to try AbSicle Pro for $14.95 plus shipping with credit card order. Call now for a free upgrade to priority processing so you'll get your AbSicle system in 7 to 10 days or less. That's 1-800-709-1301. Call now. I'm, I'm back, and so is Rick Younger, and I'm, I'm really pleased to have Rick here. He's moonlighting. I'm just hanging, uh, man. From the Today Show, and uh, we <laughs> got him. I guess I'm, you know, people going to sleep, waking up with you, and going to bed with you. Hey, it's a lot of people's dream to, to go I know to bed that. and wake <laughs> up. This, this is a new thing for America, going to sleep with a black guy, waking up with a black guy. <laughs> That's what Obama's all about. This Jerry going to Barman, sleep with a black Jerry, guy, get out of here, because you're going to get me in more trouble. I'm still in trouble with the chicken. <laughs> no, I can, I can say it. No, you can't. Yes. Hundreds, hundreds <laughs> of years of oppression has given me the right to speak craziness. <laughs> Jerry Barmash is here. He's a media guy, and he's, uh, he'll tell us if it's okay. Here's Jerry. He's, got, he's the editor of Fishbowl, which I feel we're sitting in. Jerry, how are you? <laughs> we're sitting in a fishbowl in Times Square. You better pray that there's bulletproof glass. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. How are you? Nice to see you. Have a seat next to uh, someone who's much younger, Rick Younger. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Hi, nice to see you. So now what's the media? What's the new media? Is it, are we doing new media or am I just an old guy trying to make a living here? Well, you're doing all of it. You're going to be doing radio. You're, you're, you're on uh, Facebook. So you're, you've, you've got all the elements going right now. I've got to tell you, I have two accounts on Facebook. I've got to be honest about it. 
Because I, I, I'm, I'm a two-faced guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was asking Myra. I said, "Is that account the, with Joey Reynolds? Is that her doing it?" No. Because I've seen people no. who are big names no, in no, TV I, and radio. I, I, I don't care. I go to it because, I first of all, I was social networking in my mother's womb. You know, <laughs> I mean, I never. I always social network. I, I like it. I like yeah. people. You gotta like people. Right. If you don't like people, you're never gonna be doing good in the chat room. That's true. You know, but what I do in the sex chat rooms <laughs> is I, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm doing real well. <laughs> I, I walked right into that. Yeah. Well, no, you I, know, I, I have two, I have two uh, Facebook pages. I have, uh, because you can only get up to a certain number of yeah, friends. Right. And then right. people say you should get a fan page. But I'm not really good with a fan page because I like more of an interactive right. relation thing. I've had so many people on my Facebook that I have announced a hostile takeover of Demi Moore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really uh, doing real well with, uh, with, 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 the, with technology because I'm into it. But you have to want to do it. I mean, you have to really want, you have to embrace it. Yeah, you do. You know, uh, it's funny because when I started doing comedy, I've been doing, this year marks 19 years doing stand-up. And uh, when I started, there was no internet as we know it. Um, and somewhere along the way, it came in. And it's like there are a lot of younger comics who are really into it. They've never been in the business without the Internet being a part of it. And um, there are a lot of guys, so my peers, who won't do, won't do the, you know, it's like they'll get a Facebook page or a Twitter page account because someone recommends that they do and then they this very inactive but it's uh it's really something that the this generation is it's been a part of their lives their whole lives well this is 4g and you know moving along with you you're you know more about this than anybody right now jerry well about facebook i have two accounts yeah. and it's the same thing it started with me i was working for another site before media bistro fishbowl mm -hmm. new york and that one, this one I get paid, you know, it's, you do the articles and, and, you know, and you're getting as you do it. But before it was per article and it was, you were, you were, you were self-marketing. You, you were doing it, you know, each thing well, you like, did. Like Huffington. Yeah, I, I suppose And they is. just now bought AOL, right? Yeah, just this week. Biggest story Where did she going. get that money? I know. <laughs> How did that, really? Well, AOL was Time Warner and, and they didn't want it anymore because it, I guess it was the first one because You Got Mail was a movie with Tom Hanks. You know? Right. I mean, nobody's got AOL except people my age <laughs> anymore because you've all gone to Hot Hotmail or else to G -mail. G -mail. Gmail. Right. Uh, I, I, Yahoo, right. MSN. It, 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 you do see it's an age thing. There is yeah. an age yeah, thing right. when, when you get something in your inbox of somebody with AOL. Yeah, you, know, you, you, know, you know, exactly. I don't want to do age about. profiling, but it is, you're right. right. It's true. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about how this is a little the business side of it because, you know, that's that's a part of our world now too. It seems that people are more interested in money than they are anything and, the, and we, we go right to the end, which is how much is it in it for me. Right. Facebook never made any money. It was not a money thing. And even in the movie, it shows that in social network. I sure. mean, it wasn't about money. Mm -hmm. So how did this guy make all this money with something that never made any money? It's like XM and Sirius, they don't make no money. I mean, they, they, have, they have commercials on there, they have their little spots on there but throughout. But they didn't used to have that. No, no, not at the beginning. So how do they make, how did this guy get to be a billionaire without doing nothing? But that's, he's making the billions and I'm here with but you. But how did he so do I that? Uh, I know, question. but how did he make the money without something that was unprofitable? I don't know the answer. That's well, again, XM I'm and Sirius. How know. do they make money? They, I know they have $20 million. Or I don't know, are they making money? Well, they're, not. You, they're not. No. Well, you know, something very interesting. I was uh, recently reading, because like, you know, with the there was like a bit of a Groupon um, controversy because yeah. of the commercials that some people deemed offensive, right. and it got this whole conversation going of, you know, the you know the social media today and how it's so ad driven. So even when something like Groupon goes and offends people on a grand scale, it still can move forward because of the ad revenue. And you know, I don't know, you know, the, just the whole idea of monetizing everything. And I guess that's really where it all, you know, where all the money comes from. Do you have, do you have a successful business online now? I mean, is it? Do I? Yeah. No, no. I mean, I'm doing this, the Media Bistro stuff. And what I started with the previous site that I was saying before, as self-marketing, I created a fan page on Facebook. I created the Twitter page, you know, and it was all basically to post 
you know, I'm going to be on with Joey Reynolds. I'm going to be interviewing him. I'm do, you know, here's the article and linking. And it was all about that and then the clicks. And, you know, and that, that's how I made the money. Now, it's a little different uh, with Fishbowl, but it all started with that. It was all about getting my name out there. Uh, and the brand became me. You so know. how can we help you? <laughs> You're helping me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what I, I have to thank you. I mean, I... Just interviewing you, you hadn't even seen what the article, it could have been a rip job I was going to do. <laughs> and you said, come on, come on the show, because you, you were saying, you were doing New York, I'm doing New York, and, uh, and we'll meet in the middle. And I, you know, that, that was uh, very nice. And any time you, you need a show, this is it for you. <laughs> All right? Yeah. I'm yeah. serious. You come here anytime you want, because you're, you're, you're an expert, and we want to have learn. We want, uh, you know, if we, don't, if we don't learn, how do we go to your site? Uh, you can go to, well, it's mediabistro.com and then backslash Fishbowl New York. All right. So and you're going to come back here, right? I'd love to. Okay, good. So Jerry Barmish, and you'll be able to do, he's our friend now, so you've got to support him. Give him money. <laughs> <laughs> Could that be any more blatant? <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. No, and I, and I mean it, too. I mean, you're great. You're great. You're, you're modest, too. But I know, I know inside you, you know an awful lot. And thank you for coming here tonight. Thank Appreciate you for having it. me. You know, uh, the, the more we move along into this technical world, it's the hope of the generation because this is where everybody is going to really reinvent themselves. If you lost a job and you have 30 years and you're expecting a company to pick you up again, the only place that you're going to reinvent yourself is in, in jumping into the science. Oh, yeah into the technology and and you'll find an answer I mean it's amazing how one door closes another one opens Oleg Frisch is coming up we'll be right back BAMS Auto Body, located on Liberty Avenue in Ozone Park, is a one-stop shop equipped with all the latest technologies to fix your car or truck right the first time. We work with all major insurance companies and specialize in collision, theft, and vandalism repair. Call anytime to check your vehicle status. Speak with our dedicated and knowledgeable staff. We offer a 100% written guarantee on all repairs and a lifetime warranty on all paint repairs. BAMS Auto Body, we'll get your vehicle fixed no matter what. Computer problems? Not a problem for Computer Haven. At a loss at what to do when a computer malfunctions or that inevitable virus strikes? Then call the guys at Computer Haven, the safe place for all your computing needs. Experts in computer and laptop repair, upgrades, and new custom-built PC desktops and Macs. Give us a call today, 732-264-1100, or visit us at computerhaven-nj.com. Picture wonderful guests, terrific music, and comics that are really funny, and a host that's okay. Uh, that's me, Joey Reynolds, on NBC's New York Nonstop, and what the show is called is All Night with Joey Reynolds. We're actually doing the show from the NASDAQ Market Site, which is at 43rd and Broadway in Times Square. This is a show worth staying up for all night with Joey Reynolds on NBC's New York Nonstop. Oleg Frisch, he wears the clothes that I want to wear. How come, where'd you get all this stuff? It's Paul Smith. Paul Smith? Very simple. I thought it was from Russia or something. Where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Russia, yeah, but I I'm here from... I know that. Where? Uh, it's winter right now in Russia. They wear fur coats and a lot of warm clothes. 
I did my radio show from Moscow from KGB headquarters. <clears throat> Excuse me? Yes, and also from St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg. Really? Did you yeah. like it? Of course I liked it. I liked the Russian people very much. Me too. You can't trust them, but I like them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what Kami songs, I mean, what songs are you going to sing? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, it's a very funny song. Uh, I heard it. Uh, uh, in uh, the Blossom Dearest interpretation, it's a very funny song. You know, she's uh, one of my best friends when she was, she just passed away two years ago. She was on my, she was on my radio show. I had a radio show on the Russian radio, People's Wave. It was years ago, and she was my guest. Amazing, truly amazing person. When I had a television show in Buffalo in the 60s, I had Blossom Deary on a rock and roll show. Really? She ne I'm hip. I'm aware, yeah. I'm alive, da, 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 I'm alert, da, 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 I'm a Bobby Darren knows my friend. So, <laughs> you know, she was doing those, she's a, this is something you might remember from television trivia. She did one of the very first commercial jingles ever. Mm -hmm. Self-styling, adorn, adorn. That's Blossom's voice. Ah, and she also did uh, the Schoolhouse Rock. And Cy Coleman. Cy All of those, Coleman. yeah. Uh, she's, she's just wonderful. I'm glad you're doing one of her songs, that's great. What are you doing, what song? Rhode Island is famous for you. Uh, for you. This is not. Uh, uh, remember <laughs> the one about uh, the attorney, Bernie, the attorney. My attorney, Bernie. Sure, I know. I, I'm prepared. All right, let me hear you do this one. Let, uh, let me, me get out of your way. And let I'm you do impressed it. by my attorney, Bernie. The yeah. Frischberg wrote right, the song. Right, right, and he lives in, in Los Angeles. So, yes. Oleg, uh, Oleg, where do we see you? Oleg Frisch is playing yes, where? Yes, Oleg Frisch. Where? Where are you playing? We're going to see you in person somewhere uh, this week? Uh, we're just promoting our CD, just my CD, okay. and then we will start uh, just touring, uh, I think, across the USA. Right, so sing, that's what sing, the song sing, is about. I'm getting in your way now. I've got to get out of your way. Come on. I'm so excited. I, I can't wait to hear you. <laughs> Arizona, peaches come from Georgia, and lobsters come from Maine. The wheat fields are the sweet fields of Nebraska, and Kansas gets bananas from the grain. Old whiskey comes from old Kentucky, ain't the country lucky? New Jersey gives us glue. And you, you come from Rhode Island And little old Rhode Island is famous for you Cotton comes from Louisiana Gophers from Montana And spots from Idaho They plow land in the cow land of Missouri where most beef meant for roast beef seems to grow. Grand Canyons come from Colorado. Gold comes from Nevada. Divorces also do. And you, you come from Rhode Island. Little old Rhode Island is famous for you. I've never been to Rhode Island, by the way. Pencils come from Pennsylvania, West from West Virginia, and tens from Tennessee. They know mink where they grow mink in Wyoming. A Kempcher in New Hampshire, that's for me. And me knows I come from Minnesota. Coats come from Dakota. But why should you be blue? For you, you come from Rhode Island Don't let them ride Rhode Island It's famous for you 
And you, you come from Rhode Island Little old Rhode Island is famous for you Good for you, wonderful, Alec, thank you. Well, we don't have a large audience here. I tried not to mix the lyrics. You were great. Now, you recorded this at the Capitol Tower in Los Angeles. Yes, yes. And that's a famous place. Frank Sinatra made his records there. Dream and most Mercer. recently, a couple of weeks ago, Margaret Whiting, whose father built that tower, exactly. passed she away. Passed away. So, great lady. And it's the label that gave us the Beatles. And just recently, last week, was went uh, EMI, I think, got, got taken over by Citibank now. <laughs> so Citibank owns the record company. Can you, you imagine what records they're going to put out? They'll probably put out my, my, bank, my bank records. Are you the client of Citibank or Chase? I am, I, uh, so far I am. You know, ATM machines are not profitable. Both. They, <laughs> and they're in Russia. Thank yes, you for we have Citibank. Us. This is the Oleg Frisch album. Buy it. We'll be right back. celebrities have something to say, they head for the stoop. This is my stoop. I gotta come to the stoop. Talk stoop. I feel like we're so close that we could kiss. This is a whole other kind of stoop. It's where Cat Greenleaf gets people talking. What? What? Really? Yep. That's amazing. He has. Listen, Naked, do you mind if I call you Naked? Tell me something good. The best of New York on a stoop in Brooklyn. The celebrity butts that have graced the stoop. Talk stoop. Weeknights at 8 on New York Nonstop. Sponsored by Cozy. Life should be delicious. I'm an anchor and a pilot. I am passionate about chocolate. I am a ballerina. I'm the daughter of a jazz musician. I am a four-time New York Golden Glove champion. Oh, I'm my grandpa. Yeah, I'm your grandma. I'm interested in the story behind the story. I'm making this look natural. I am glamorous. I am an anchor and a blues girl. I am all about my craft. I am New York. I am New York. I'm a New Yorker. I am New York. I am New York. We're all about New Yorkers. LX New York. It's the story of the moment. A taste of the best. It's opening night. A helping hand. The characters of New York. The spirit of New York, told our way. LX New York, weekdays at five. We're all over town. Tonight, we're just going to share this bucket of chicken. Uh, I'll hello, save y'all some wings. Hello. Yeah. I, I would like some chicken, please. You like a piece? Um, all right. Just don't take the big piece. Uh, no, you get the big piece. Daddy gets the big piece. No, I'm from Buffalo. I want the wing. You want the wing? <laughs> yeah. Because I know Jen out. wants it when we're off right. camera. The band's going to have to split these three pieces. Yeah. Well, this is good. I like this. This is, mm. this is wonderful. <laughs> We're going to do the history of chicken See, wings. See, this, this is uh, what it's all about. People coming together, eating chicken together. You know? I'm going to be in a lot of trouble That's with this. That's what the founding fathers <laughs> intended it when they started this country. Yeah. Just and Martin so Luther King had a dream. I have a dream today that one day we could sit together on NBC late night and eat fried chicken together. <laughs> I have a dream. We're going to get out of here with just a little chicken, just a little band. Is this product placement, by the way? This is not product placement. We did not give it a name. Kennedy, thank you. <laughs> here we go. Come on, you guys. Just a little band. Just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit.
Ban. thousand cabs in New York City, but there's only one that pays you. Climb into the cash cab and I will quiz you all the way to your destination. As the meter clicks, the questions get harder and the stakes get higher. If you get stumped, you can shout out for help on the phone or off the street. But be careful, because in this rig, it's three strikes and you're out. So what do you say? We'll be right around 46. Here is your AccuWeather five-day forecast. Near 50 on Wednesday. We hit 50 on Thursday, and we'll have some rain on Thursday. It'll be a rainy day. Coming up, 53 with clouds and sun on Friday. Warming up just a little bit. Normal average afternoon high temperature this time of the year, 47 degrees. I'm really excited. Why? Uh -oh. Next half hour. Next half hour. Don't go away. We're going to take you to Carnival. Oh, that's right. Wednesday's Ash Wednesday already. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sheesh. Right over, yes. So Mardi Gras Tuesday. You should Wednesday's see. Ash Wednesday? Yes. yes. As opposed oh, to Ash. That's a problem. Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> All right. I know it's a Wednesday. It's Ash Wednesday. <laughs> but I'm, where, how am I going to do that? All right. I got to figure out. Yeah, yeah, so much to do. I am like loaded up Wednesday. I got to find a place. I got to figure out how I'm going to get ashes. All right. You'll figure it out. Yeah. We know you can do it. All right. Let's well, go more outside. importantly, you got to fit in the Easter Bunny costume later, too. <laughs> 
Wednesday. I got Biggie's tournament. I got La Croix. I got all kinds of things on Wednesday. All right, let's go outside. I'm going to show you a couple things. First off, we're going to start out here uh, again with these ongoing maps, and we'll start uh, with uh, ongoing problems as you get up there in Westchester County and Rockland County on the sawmill between Grant and the Taconic 119 and the Cross County southbound at the city line. Also, the Bronx River Parkway from the Cross County uh, to the county center, and then both ways on the Hudson and the Cross County on into the city line. All that will continue. And then also, we're going to take a quick look here now in North Jersey. We continue to have that Route 46 in Lodi. That continues uh, with uh, some flooding, and then also on Route 17 around the Garden State Parkway. Uh, Blackwells and Grigstown Causeways are both closed down there in uh, central New Jersey, also with flooding. We'll go to our commuter update screen again. The Danbury branch, uh, they have uh, no service there, and again, that because of ongoing problems uh, with a broken rail. But uh, again, the uh, Danbury branch now down this morning for Eyewitness News. I'm Joan Olin. Thank you, Joe. Still ahead on eyewitnesses this morning. Negotiations come to a standstill. We'll have the very latest on the custody battle for Charlie Sheen's twins. And rumors grow about just who will be designing the royal wedding dress for Kate Middleton, although they have asked Lori her opinion. <laughs> Not Stay design. with us. <laughs> A man in Tampa needs a new liver. A man in Trenton needs a new liver. Who gets help first? A woman in Nebraska needs a new heart. A woman in New York needs one too. Who lives? Eyewitness News uncovers why where you live matters most in this race against time. Tonight at 11 on Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Here they come. All the new tech products you need. And they're all looking for the same thing. The one place that makes technology easy. Staples. With highly trained tech experts and expanded tech centers, Staples makes finding the right technology just the way you want it. Easy. Easy to buy, easy to fix, easy to save. Staples. That was easy. Get away to a place where lunch meetings.